Hi, everyone. Welcome to part two of my driver series where I'll be talking about the backswing and some key movements and positions that you can look out for uh, to help you with more power and consistency. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. So when it comes to a driver swing versus, say, an iron swing, the same movements are involved, obviously, and mechanics-wise, it's not going to be a whole lot different. Now, the only difference, remember, between the iron and the driver when you're swinging it is the fact that the ball is no longer on the ground. So when the ball is on the ground with an iron, remember, we're trying to do things to encourage more of a downward strike. But with a driver, since it's teed up, we want to encourage the club and swing more level to the ground. So obviously, we changed our setup position. So that would change how our body is bent at address. So in terms of um, a few positions throughout the backswing, there might be some differences to help encourage the club head to swing more level to the ground as opposed to downwards on the golf ball. So I'm just going to quickly go over some key concepts about the setup position that I mentioned in part one. But now since the ball is teed up, we mentioned that the ball position has to be placed more forward. Um, and this would help to encourage the club to, again, swing less downwards, but more level to the ground. And precisely that that ball should be pretty close to being in line with the lead shoulder when you're setting up. Okay. Also, I mentioned that the, that the stance has to be a bit wider, okay, wider, a bit wider than shoulder width, just because the club is the longest club in the bag now. So it'll help with overall balance. And the fact that you've moved your ball position forward and you widen your stance, when you set up to it, you should see that there is a little bit more space between where your head is positioned and where that ball line would be, okay? And that would mean that would also encourage that your, your upper body to be a little bit more tilted into the trail side, okay? Weight is still about, uh, fairly evenly distributed, if not 55% still on the lead side. Now, setting up this way is going to give you the best chance at swinging that club head more level to the ground. So when it comes to initiating the backswing from this position, a lot of people have a different feel uh, over three main movements. And the first would be kind of rotation. And the second would be extension, which is just your movement of kind of bending backwards and pointing the chest up higher. And then the concept of sways or your lateral movements right and left in the backswing. So I want to first talk about the importance of rotation um, of the upper body with a driver. And when you get to the top, it's really important that you do turn your chest enough because if you didn't turn your chest very much, um, you can see that it affects the height of my hands. Um, it can also affect the depth at which my hands can get by, behind me. Um, that'll really rob you of power. Um, also, if you don't demonstrate enough rotation and your hands can't get high enough or behind you, then you risk the club kind of being thrown more degrees from out to in. And if the club comes more degrees from out to in, you'll tend to be a bit more steep and you'll start to hit down on the golf ball. So uh, a lot of people that don't demonstrate enough rotation in the chest, um, they tend to sky the golf ball a lot because they're hitting too, too many degrees down on it. Okay. Now, um, you'll notice that I, I placed a alignment rod kind of to, on the, along the inside of my, or the inside edge of my trail foot. And this is a really good um, exercise to kind of feel out or gauge whether or not you're kind of having enough rotation with the driver. So if you place that there and maybe another shaft kind of across your shoulders, when you make a turn, you want to see that the shaft that's across your shoulders is somewhat parallel or close to parallel um, to the alignment rod that's on the ground. Okay. So that would probably indicate that you you've turned about close to 90 degrees. All right. You, you, you want to try your best not to be kind of shy of parallel. Um, so you want to try to get your um, to, to at least parallel or even a little bit beyond that is okay. Um, and you'll, you'll see a lot of that the, the longest hitters on tour, they, they definitely usually turn more than, than 90 degrees. Okay. Now, in combination with rotation, I just want to talk about extension because I think a lot of people um, can't really feel the correct amount of, of, of extension um, in combination with the rotation. So what I mean by that is if you were to actually – place um, kind of alignment rod that's like extending out straight um, through my chest. If I rotated, but I didn't have any extension, you can see that uh, my head is going to move to uh, further behind the golf ball. And you can see that my chest is still turned, but the, but the shaft that's kind of running through or extending past my chest is, is pointing down. Okay. So if 
a player turns but doesn't have enough extension, that will also really limit um, their ability to get the hands high. Okay, They're, they'll also tend to be like swinging it very, very flat as well. And if you can't get your hands high, um, again, it's going to affect really rob you of power. Okay, so you can see that when I turn and I extend correctly, that the driver shaft is going to be pointed just, up, just slightly upwards. Okay, we don't want it to point, you know, totally upwards like this, because then you, you, know, you obviously run the risk of, of potentially kind of reverse pivoting. Okay, but when you make this turn and you can add enough extension, you just want to make sure that the shaft is pointed just a little bit upwards. Okay. Now, when I, when I grip the driver again and I make that backswing, okay, if you were to draw kind of uh, that ball line kind of extending straight up from where the ball is, the, the one visual way to know if you're, you're, if you're combining enough rotation and extension is you can see that, that there's still a bit of a space or a gap uh, between my upper back and that line. Now, if you were flexed too flexed forward, with enough rotation, you can see that, that that space between my upper back is very, very large, okay? And if obviously, if you extend it too much, you can see that my upper back is almost kind of into that line, maybe even slightly ahead of it, okay? So that's a really good visual uh, way to know that you're combining both of those things fairly well, um, especially if, you, if you're filming yourself from the face-on view. So again, when I turn my shoulders enough and I, add, I, I still add some extension or get my chest to kind of point upwards, when I get to the top, you can still see, uh, you know, slight space between my upper back and that line. Now, a, another way to kind of gauge whether or not you're extending enough in the back of the driver is to pay attention to the movement of your head from the face on view. Okay, so if a player demonstrates maybe too much extension, then that would actually encourage the head to move more, more so into the target, okay, relative to where it started, kind of more so behind the ball. And then reversely, a player that would demonst demonstrate too much upper body flexion or not enough extension, you would see that their head really moves off the ball to the right, okay? But if you were to perform enough extension with rotation, you'll see that my head doesn't really move so much off of the golf ball. It stays relatively in the same place. Okay, so again, this would be the right amount of extension with rotation. This would be someone with not enough extension. And this would be someone with too much extension. And you can see um, how the head movement of the head is directly correlated to that. So the third movement that I want to talk about is the concept of sways or kind of the lateral movement um, right and left kind of throughout the backswing with the driver. Now, I know it's commonly been taught in the past um, to you know shift everything into the right foot um, and but when thinking this the, the mistake is that people are, are moving their entire pelvis too far kind of away from the target um, in the backswing now there are some players um, that can, would have this initiation kind of off of the ball but almost all the time by the time a player completes the backswing they're going to reposition the hip kind of back into the same place or even slightly more towards the target Okay. Now, the reason why you don't want your entire pelvis to kind of move so much off of the golf ball and initiate your downswing from that position is because the further back your pelvis gets behind the ball as you start the downswing, then that'll also encourage the path or the club path to swing too many degrees from out to in. Okay. And that'll also cause you to be a bit more steep kind of coming down in, into the downswing as well. All right. So, if I pull up some, some tour pros here, you'll, you'll see maybe a little bit of initiation of the hip kind of moving off the ball at the start, uh, which again, it's not, uh, that doesn't mean they're doing anything wrong, obviously. But by the time they are completing the backswing, you'll notice that that line that was against their trail leg, you'll see that they either you know, stay within that or even they have their pocket form a small gap um, away from that line, which means that they're actually positioning the hips you know, slightly more into the target. Now, when these two players get to the top of their backswings, um, you'll notice quite a lot of shoulder turn, and you'll notice that where they point their chest is slightly upwards. It does not point downwards. So all three of these points um, are kind of present, and those visuals that I mentioned 
um, the, the line coming straight from where the ball is. By the time they get to the top, their, their, their hip is still kind of fairly much, pretty, pretty much in the same place, if not slightly more into the target, while you see a slight gap or um, a space between the upper back and that ball line. So now having awareness of these three movements of the sways, rotation, and extension, as well as those visual um, kind of aids to help uh, with your positioning. If you're filming yourself from the face on view, it should really, really help with you producing more power and being more consistent with the driver. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss if you would inquire about my online lessons. I will also leave a link to my website in the description box below as well. And if you have some extra time and maybe struggling with your fairway woods as well, I would encourage you guys to watch this video next. And it'll just go over some key concepts to think about the next time you're, on, you're in the fairway, hitting your fairway woods to help you get the ball in the air.